Dad, what's an AI agent? Literally every single kid on the entire planet is asking this question right now. And since you're watching this video, my guess is you probably are too. So here's what I wanted to cover today. First, I just wanted to take 30 seconds to explain to you why understanding what an AI agent is, is so important. Then I'm gonna to explain to you exactly what an AI agent is in terms so simple, even a five-year-old could understand it. And then at the end, we're gonna hop into my favorite automation platform, N8N, to build a kid-friendly beginner AI agent. So by the end of this video, you'll know exactly what an AI agent is and even how to build one. And I'm gonna explain it to you in terms so simple, even a five-year-old could understand. If you're new here, hi, my name's Duncan. I've grown my AI agency to over $10,000 a month and I've sold my workflows to thousands of customers. I help people like you learn how to build and sell AI automations. So just give me 30 seconds and let me explain to you real quick why understanding AI agents is so important right now. And there are two main reasons for this. And to me, number one is responsibility. The whole world of AI is brand new and our kids are coming up in this world and it is our responsibility as parents to have at least a surface level understanding of these tools if our kids are going to be interacting with them every single day. And number two, is opportunity. The opportunity for kids who understand AI is massive right now. Think about the kids who grew up in the 90s and learned web design. Those are the people who ended up building the internet. That same opportunity exists for our children right now. So what is an AI agent? Well, who is the best agent your kid knows? That's right, it's mom. And so basically what makes mom an agent is the fact that you can ask her to do something and she'll do it for you. So if you ask your mom to bring you a glass of orange juice, she'll probably go to the kitchen and come back with a glass of orange juice. But what if you ask your mom for a glass of orange juice and a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Well, now she has to go get the orange juice. She then has to go and bring back a slice of toast. She has to go into the pantry and grab some peanut butter. She has to grab the jelly, and she even has to grab a knife to make it all happen. But what would we have to do to turn mom into an AI agent? It's actually simpler than you might think. All we have to do to turn mom into an AI agent is give her a bunch more arms. So basically an AI agent is an AI tool that can perform multiple tasks for you all at once. And what's cool about this is these tools can come from all over the place. There are email tools, there are research tools, there are tools for your calendar. And if you look at this long list of tools here, you'll probably notice that a lot of your favorite companies have AI tools available to us that we can start using right now. So now that you have an understanding of what AI agents are and why it's important to know about them, let's hop into N8N and build a super kid-friendly AI agent. What do dinosaurs like to eat? So now our AI agent is using ChatGPT to understand our question. It's going to research the answer for us, and then it's gonna come back, it's gonna understand the research, it's gonna write a joke for us, and then it's gonna draft an email for us in the format that we told it to. But what's even cooler about this is that if I go over to my Gmail account and come into the draft section, we have this draft all ready to go with our kid's email, a subject line. It says, hi, son slash daughter. Why did the dinosaur eat leaves and meat? Because it wanted to be a dino snack. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Love you, mom slash dad. P.S. Did you know some dinosaurs were herbivores and only ate plants like leaves and ferns, while others were carnivores that ate meat? Some even ate both. Incredible. So to build our kid-friendly automation, we're gonna use a platform called N8N, and I will leave a link in the description where you can sign up totally for free. After you create an account, you'll have access to your workspace, which has all of your automations. And you just come up to the top and click Create Workflow. Now, I've already started a basic workflow because I wanted to make sure that we were able to keep track of what we're building, and then I have this prompt for the AI agent that we're gonna to use today. So I just wanna review the flow real quick. First, we're gonna ask a question using a chat, then the AI is gonna research a fun fact about your topic, it's gonna to write a silly joke, and then it's gonna draft an email for us. So in order to get started, you can either click the plus in the top right or hit tab on your keyboard to set up what's called a trigger. And this is basically the thing that starts your entire automation. And we're just gonna use this chat message here. And what we can do is we can click this arrow all the way down the bottom right, and we can just make this a little bit bigger. And you can start typing to this now, but it's not hooked up to anything, so you're not gonna get any sort of response. The next thing we can do is we can hook up our AI agent. So we're just gonna click the plus here and we can type in AI agent to connect our agent. So now in order to actually use the AI, what we have to do is we have to connect up a chat model to this. And you can use anything. You can use ChatGPT, you can use Quad, you can use Perplexity, you can use Gemini, Grok, whatever. Today we're gonna use ChatGPT because it's the most common. So just click the plus here and you can come down here to open AI. If you don't see it, you can type in open and you'll just click the chat model here. And for what we're doing today, 4.1 mini is all we need. In order to get this working, you're going to need access to your API credentials. Really quick, because if you're new, the term API can sound kind of scary, but you can think of it like this. Basically, we have a square and a square obviously speaks the language square and we have a circle and a circle speaks the language circle. Sadly, these two can't talk to each other. But what an API does 
is basically an API just creates a shared language between our two services. So if this is our AI agent, and this is ChatGPT, now these two are able to communicate with each other, no problem. So in order to connect your AI agent to ChatGPT, you need to come over to platform.openai.com, create an account, and then go ahead and click settings. From there, just come down to the bottom left and go into API keys. You can click create new secret key, and we can just name this kid agent, and go ahead and click create secret key. If you want a refresher on this, I'll leave a video up here, which literally shows you how to do this in 90 seconds. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this key. And if I come back over here, you go to credential to connect with, and you just come down to create credential. And then I'm just gonna paste in the secret key that we just copied. And I'm just gonna go ahead and rename this kid agent to match. Just go ahead and click save. You can see we now have a connection tested successfully and we're ready to roll. I do wanna note that you wanna make sure you have some credit in your account. So now in order to kick this off, we could type, hey, how's it going? If we send this off, you can see our agent's going to use ChatGPT to create a response for us. And basically right now, we're sort of just talking to ChatGPT. This isn't functioning like an agent yet. It says, hey, I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. How about you? How can I help you today? Cool, off to a good start. So if we come back to the flow up here, you can see the next things we have to do are research a fun fact and then write a silly joke. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this agent prompt, which just says, you are a helpful assistant. You will be given a user message. Your tasks are as follow. One, call the perplexity tool to perform research based on the user message. Two, turn the output from the research into one silly joke suitable for a five-year-old. And we're gonna stop there for now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this. And if I come back into the AI agent, and let me just screw the chat down because we don't need to see it that big. I can go in head here and I can go add an option and I can add a system message. And I can just go ahead and I can paste in our system message. You can see I can make this bigger and we just have the same thing, right? And so what we're missing now is the research tool. And like I said, we wanna call the perplexity research tool because perplexity is still the best way to research the internet right now. And they have a great built-in tool for NADN. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the plus and I'm gonna type in perplexity. And same thing as before, in order to connect with perplexity, you're gonna need another API key. And the reason I'm doing it this way today is to get you used to this idea that you're going to have a ton of API keys all over the place the more tools you start to connect with. So the more comfortable you get with it now, the better off you'll be in the long run. So if you have an account, just come into your account down here, go ahead and do all settings, and you can come into API keys and go ahead and click create key and then it's gonna be the same process as before, right? Click create new credential, paste in your API key, name your key, and you're good to go. I already have one set up, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change the model here to Sonar so that we can actually do research. What's insanely cool about these AI tools now is that I can just click this button here, and so instead of actually typing a prompt for perplexity to research, the AI agent is actually going to create the prompt for us. And now you can see the power of AI agents. I'm also gonna click simplify the output because we don't need a ton of information. The other thing that's really important to do with all of your agent tools is to write the tool description. Basically the name of the tool and this description is how your AI agent is going to know which tool to use for what tasks. So we're gonna just gonna say, call this tool, we're just gonna say, call this perplexity tool to research the internet. Great, and so now if we come into the chat and I can say, what do dinosaurs like to eat? And I'm just gonna go ahead and send this off. And so now ChatGPT is processing our request. The AI agent is taking it in and now it's recognizing that it needs to send our request to Perplexity to research our answer for us. And what's funny is because our agent prompts said do research for us and tell us a joke, we can see here it says, why did the dinosaur bring a salad to the party? Because it loved to eat leaves, fruits, and twigs with its dynamite teeth. Pretty freaking hilarious. If you want a deeper understanding of exactly what's going on, you can open up your AI agent and you can look in the logs, right? And so you can see, this is the system message that we gave it. And then if we come into perplexity, and then you can see this is actually the prompt that our AI agent sent to do the research. So it just sent our message along, right? And then if we come in here, we can basically see that perplexity actually did a whole bunch more research than it gave back to us. Basically because the AI agent decided that we didn't need all of this because we simply asked it, what do dinosaurs like to eat? You can see here, exhibit a wide variety of diets, mirroring diversity seen in modern animals. They can be broadly categorized into three groups, et cetera, et cetera. This is way more information than a five-year-old probably needs in this case. But cool, you've basically set up an AI agent to call its first tool. That is awesome. So if you look back at the flow, the last thing we wanna do is send an email. And the reason I do this is because I thought it would be fun. Like if your kids are at school for the day, you could use this tool or they could use this tool to chat with the agent and then it could actually draft an email just to kind of brighten up their day. And so I'm just gonna add the second part of this prompt here which is three, 
Call the Gmail tool to draft one email in the following format. And you can totally customize this format however you like. And I just say, hey, son slash daughter, put in your kid's name here. Insert one joke, which is going to be the joke that the agent writes. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Love you. And then, you know, mom or dad. And then P.S. Did you know? And then it's going to insert the one fun fact that it researched for us. And so we can come back into the AI agent. And we can just come down to the bottom here. And now we can just add this to the bottom of the system prompt. So I'm going to click the plus here and I'm going to type in Gmail and we're going to use the Gmail tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this resource here to draft instead of message, because this is just going to draft it in our inbox without us actually having to send it. Again, what's super cool about this is the AI agent can do all of the work for us. I can click these little stars here and the AI agent is going to create the subject for the email. I can click them again down here and it's actually going to write the message for us. The only thing we need to add down here is who are we actually sending this to? So we can just go ahead and say mykid at gmail.com. Great. Just like the other tools, if you want access to Gmail, you're going to need to connect the API. It's a little bit more involved of a process, so I'll leave a video up here that walks you through it step by step. And like I said, we want to make sure we change the tool description so our agent knows exactly what to use it for. So I'm just going to say call this tool to draft an email in Gmail. So I'm going to go ahead and click save, and now we can send off the exact same prompt. What do dinosaurs like to eat? So now our AI agent is using ChatGPT to understand our question. It's going to research the answer for us using perplexity, and then it's gonna come back, it's gonna understand the research, it's gonna write a joke for us, and then it's gonna draft an email for us in the format that we told it to. If you come in here, you can see the output, right? And this is our email. But what's even cooler about this is that if I go over to my Gmail account and come into the draft section, we have this draft all ready to go with our kid's email, a subject line. It says, hi, son slash daughter. Why did the dinosaur eat leaves and meat? Because it wanted to be a dino snack. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Love you, mom slash dad. P.S. Did you know some dinosaurs were herbivores and only ate plants like leaves and ferns, while others were carnivores that ate meat? Some even ate both. Incredible. So this is a great way to connect with your kids using AI on a subject that actually interests them. If you thought this video was fun, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you want to get access to the workflow we built today, I'll leave a link in the description where you can join the community. I'll see you over there.